Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the San Diego Padres. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Tuesday evening to you, wherever you may be. Welcome to Dodger Stadium, game one of the three-game series with the San Diego Padres. Dodgers have just finished a grueling stretch, 29 games in 31 days, 26 of the 29 against winning teams, and 18 on the road. How did they do? They wound up winning 16, losing 13, and they picked up two and a half games against the San Francisco Giants. For San Diego, Diego. They have just lost three out of four to the Cardinals. They had a five-game winning streak prior to that. And over the same stretch, surprisingly, the Padres were 17 and 11. One thing about these two teams when they get together, runs are really at a premium. The total number of runs scored in 10 games, and the Dodgers have won seven of the 10. The total, 49 runs. On the mound for the Dodgers, the newcomer, Kevin Correa, 1-0. He beat it. Atlanta since he put on the Dodger uniform, 5-13 and 13 when he was over in Minnesota. On the mound for San Diego, Ian Kennedy, just a couple of years ago, he was a 21-game winner with Arizona. He brings a lot to the mound. He is 9-10, and 5-5 five and five lifetime against the Dodgers. So, those are the pregame notes. Stay tuned. We'll have a great ball game and a whole lot more coming up right after this.
Morning to you, wherever you may be. We're at Dodger Stadium, a beautiful summer's evening. The heat wave has moved out for a little while anyway. Kevin Correa very much at home as he makes his way to the mound to begin the first game of the three-game series with Bud Black, San Diego Padres. Along with Bud Black, a lot of familiar faces and at the same time, a lot of newcomers in his lineup. And when we take a look at Bud Black's lineup, we sure remember his bench coach, Dave Roberts, of course, and his pitching coach, Darren Balsley. But here they come, the new version of the San Diego Padres. Jan Hervis Solarte will open up at third base. Abraham Almonte in center field. Seth Smith leading the club in doubles, triples, and home runs in left field. Jed Jerko off the DL back at second base. Jake Gobert at first base. Reimer Liriano will be in right field. Rene Rivera, the catcher. Alexei Amarista at shortstop. And certainly somebody we know, Ian Kennedy, on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, a local boy. That is to say, he's from San Diego. And his name, Kevin Correa, who went to Cal Poly. He spent most of his youth in Point Loma. His grandfather and father were members of the Portuguese tuna fishing community. That was a prominent part of San Diego society throughout the 70s. His dad owned a tuna boat named the Little Mermaid, and all six sons became part of the business. So you think it's tough pitching in the big leagues. He said his father told him about jumping into the nets to free dolphins. There'd be sharks and jellyfish in the nets along with the tuna. And they'd have to go in there and battle them all to get the tuna and the dolphins free. So he knows all about that. And we'll see what he does now with Jan Solarte. Switch hitter batting left-handed. And Solarte takes a strike and they count 0 and 1. Jan Solarte's uncle is former big leaguer Roger Cedeno. During spring training, he got a lot of trips from Carlos Beltran. He's from Venezuela, 27 years old. And the strike one pitch a little high. One ball and one strike. Solarte 5'11", 195. Originally signed by the Twins. Never quite made it to the Twins. Otherwise he would know Correa who pitched for Minnesota. The 1-1 one, one pitch that is off the plate. Ball 2-2-1 two, two and one the count. Kevin Correa is a big man. He's 6'3", 210. He has a birthday on the 24th. Kevin will be 34 originally signed by the Giants back in uh, 2002 right handed deals and this one is low so Correa falling behind to the leadoff man three balls and one strike Padres and Dodgers have scrambled for 10 games already this year Dodgers have won seven of the ten both teams hurting coming into the series. Padres lost three out of four to St. Louis and the Dodgers was swept by Milwaukee. Meanwhile Solarte fouls it off and the count three and two. Meanwhile Dave Roberts who of course played so well the Dodgers loved him as a teammate. He is now the bench coach for Bud Black. Black has done a magnificent job all of his years at the helm of the Padres. 3-2 pitch on the way is swung on and a high fly ball into deep center. Going back as Puig turns and makes the catch about three feet shy of the warning track. So a long fly ball and we have one away in the first inning. We can take a look at the Dodgers with the leather. It's Gonzalez and Gordon, Aria Morena and Turner with Crawford, Puig and Kemp in the outfield. Ellis behind the plate handling Correa. The batter now is Abraham Almonte. Almonte is from the Dominican. He is only 5'9", 205 pounds, but he plays center field in the big leagues, so he can play. And he probably whacks the first pitch down the right field line. Kemp in pursuit of it at the bullpen gate. Almonte steams in the second base with a stand-up double. So Almonte, a switch hitter. Hitting 250 left, but in the 360s right. That's his second double. He just came up. So one out, long fly ball. Now the line drive to right for a double, and the batter will be Seth Smith. 
You certainly are familiar with the name Seth Smith. He's been around quite a while and a marvelous ball player. In fact, Seth Smith and Mike Trout share a distinction right now. They're the two men who lead their teams in doubles, triples, and home runs. For Seth out of Mississippi, you may remember he played quite a few years with the Colorado Rockies, left hand batter. So Correa with the infield swung around to first gets a strike and the count all in one. With the infield swung around, that means Aru Barena is behind second base, so that takes a couple of steps away from Almonte. D. Gordon a couple of feet out on the grass in right field. Strike one pitch on the way to Seth Smith. And Correa delivers breaking ball low and inside. So one ball and one strike count. Basically fastball slider change up. That might have been a slur that big overhand breaking ball. Not as hard as the slider we're accustomed to seeing. Smith backs out one ball and one strike the count. Seth Smith was one of Eli Manning's backup quarterbacks at the University of Mississippi for three years and he never had a single snap. Seth takes an off speed pitch away and the count two balls and one strike. Seth is 6 3 2 10. He'll be 32 the end of September. First came up to the big leagues about eight seasons ago with the Rockies. In Colorado. His high in home runs was 17. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way. Seth holds up. They're going to look at third. No swing, says Bill Miller. And a three ball, one strike count. The check swing from another side as the third base umpire saw him. Did not break his wrists, dragged the bat, and held it back. Correa with a runner at second, one out. Kevin straightens up. Smith, the left hand hitter, waits, takes off the plate for ball four. So Correa, a little wobbly now at the outset with a double and a walk. And the batter will be Jed Jerko. Jerko was very, very Jerko. impressive when we saw him. Then he got all banged up and he went on the disabled list. Jerko is from Morgantown, West Virginia. Last year, he made some news. He hit uh, eight home runs in August. Well, he has eight home runs for the year. Right hand batter and a good one despite the 199 batting average. Correa's fastball, little low, ball one. One and oh, the count. So the Padres, who had a five game winning streak and then lost three out of four in St. Louis, they've won 10 games in August, and the club's been playing very well. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Correa over the top with a fastball. That finds the mark for a strike. And a one ball, one strike count. If you look at Jed Jerko at 5'10, 200 pounder, you might think he was a linebacker for the University of West Virginia, and he was. He was a three time All State selection in baseball as well. 1 1 pitch on the way, low. Two balls and one strike the count. Ellis unaccustomed to handling Korea tried to turn and block and the ball squirted between his knees landed just behind him to his right and Ellis reacted in time to keep Almonte at second base. So Korea gave up a one out double to Almonte a walk to Smith and he's behind now to Jerko two balls and one strike. Last year. When Jericho was breaking in with the Padres, he had 23 home runs. That got everybody's attention. He's the fifth rookie second baseman to have 20 or more home runs as a rookie. So he commands respect. 2 1 pitch is swung on. High fly ball to deep center. Back goes Puig to the fence. It is gone. And just like that, the Padres are out in front, three to nothing. So no surprise really to see Jerko hit one out. He's got that kind of power and that kind of talent. By the way, we talked about him hitting more than 20 at 23. Danny Espinosa 
And Alexei Ramirez had 21. Dan Ugla had 27. D. Gordon or Joe Gordon at 24. And now here is Jerko, a long home run to center. And just like that, Padres out in front, three to nothing. We ought to duck in the fact simultaneously. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning in Chicago. The Cubs are leading the Giants two to nothing, and there's been a rain delay since they are in the bottom of the fifth inning, and since the home team is leading, that would be an official game, and the Cubs would win it. So that eases a little of the pressure as Jerko puts the Padres out in front. Little ground ball off the bat of Gobert, fielded by Gonzalez, taken to the bag. And Reimer Liriano coming up. Batting sixth. Right fielder, number seven, Reimer Liriano. So Liriano making his way up to the plate after that big home run by Jed Jerko. Liriano, another name you'd not be very familiar with. He came up out of the minor leagues. He's an outfielder who had Tommy John surgery last year. Reimer. Hitting 211, just four for 19 since being called up. He's from Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He hits a big chopper wide, a third. Turner is on it and throws him out. But the damage has been done. Almonte double, Smith walks, and Jerko hits it over the center field fence. And at the end of half an inning, 3 0, San Diego. First inning, and for Don Mattingly and the Dodgers, they have to do something that they haven't done much against the Padres, and that score some runs. But we'll take a look at the Dodger lineup now. It'll be D. Gordon starting off at second base, Yasiel Puig in center field, Adrian Gonzalez will be at first base, Matt Kemp in right field, Carl Crawford in left, Justin Turner at third, Iris Bell Araborena at short. A.J. Ellis, the catcher, Kevin Correa on the mound. On the mound for San Diego, certainly no stranger. Dodgers have been battling him ever since he came to the Arizona Diamondbacks in 210. A local boy, Ian Kennedy's from Huntington Beach, although he's moved over to Scottsdale, went to school at USC and was a first-round pick by the Yankees. He also graduated from La Quinta High School in Huntington Beach and gets a strike against D. Gordon. We mentioned at the outset the 10 games between the Dodgers and Padres. The Dodgers have won seven of the 10, but not by much. Here's the strike one pitch, and Gordon takes in the dirt, one and one. If you put all the runs that were scored by the Dodgers and the Padres in 10 games total, with only 49 runs. So the Dodgers worked out to 2.7 and the Padres 2.2. So pitching should be something. We'll see. 
The 1 1 pitch on the way. Kennedy deals and it's fouled away. And the count one ball and two strikes. So if you've joined us a little late, with one out in the first inning, Abraham Almonte doubled to right. Seth Smith walked. Jed Jerko hit a three run home run. And that's it. Three nothing Padres. Now the 1 2 pitch on the way. Little fly ball down the left field line. Slicing foul, dropped untouched. Great effort by Seth Smith going into a slide, but he had no play. So D. Gordon trying to get aboard with his 56 stolen bases, trying to make something happen for a ball club that has been completely shut down, losing three in a row to the Milwaukee Brewers. So Messrs. Crawford and Kemp and the rest have got to start swinging that big stick. The one two pitch little ground ball leaving first base is Grober high toss to Kennedy both Kennedy and Gordon go down in a collision and both men fortunately are OK and Gordon is out. That was a surprise to see Gobert go so far off the bag on a routine ground ball towards the second baseman. But that always brings up the story one of the toughest plays for a first baseman to go after the ball or go back to the bag. This one caused the collision because it could easily have been handled by Jerko. Both the pitcher Kennedy and Gordon go down. Kennedy did get to the bag ahead of time and both men are OK albeit shaken up a little bit. So one down three one if you're scoring. Tough play. Each man very fortunate to be able to get up and continue. We've had a lot of injuries on a play like that. Kennedy goes to the mound and continues to warm up and Gordon shows no ill for the collision. So we have one out and Yasio Puig will be coming up. One thing about Ian Kennedy he has always pitched well. I mean after all he won 21 games in his career in the National League. He is 57 and 36 21 games above 500 and in the Western Division the year that he won 21 he was 10 and 0 against the West and in his career 25 and 16. So Kennedy any way you cut it good pitcher and the first pitch away from Puig you may remember it really started the rhubarb when Kennedy's pitch hit the tip of the nose of Yasiel Puig and the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks went round and round for a while. Yasiel hitting 313. Kennedy's fastball on the outside corner at the knees. One ball and one strike. One thing that might surprise you unless you've been keeping tabs on San Diego their pitching has been excellent especially the bullpen. One ball and one strike. Puig looks and that's low. Ball two, two and one the count. The bullpen number one in earned run average, in lowest opponent batting average, and in saves. They have really been something. Now the two one pitch on the way, swung on and missed. Puig way out in front of a breaking ball, and the count two and two. So Yasiel Puig up against Ian Kennedy with Adrian Gonzalez on deck and the Padres jump out to a three to nothing lead in the first inning. Jerko a three run home run over the center field fence. Two two pitch on the way and Puig takes strike three called and down he goes 93 mile an hour fastball. Yasiel does not say anything he just looked at the play done by Chad Fairchild and walks away. So two out. The pitch was framed pretty well by Rene Rivera. He kind of moved the mitt just enough to make it look like the pitch caught the outside corner. They call it framing. The good catchers do it all the time. So here is Adrian hitting 274, 17 home runs, 83 runs batted in, and takes ball one. We're talking about the pitching of the San Diego Padres. They're the pitching second highest number of wins in the league with 10 in August. 
The 1 0 pitch in the dirt bouncing away. Two balls and no strikes. And of course, when you have a, a fellow who won 21 games and lost only four, and that was Kennedy back in 2011, you have somebody who's special out there just waiting to pick up a win. 2 0 pitch on the way. Gonzalez swings high fly ball, but it's playable more high than anything. Else. Abraham Almonte is there to make the catch. Kennedy sets him down one, two, three. And at the end of an inning, Padres three, Dodgers nothing. Yes, honey, nice to see. You. San Diego the Dodgers stung in the first inning Almonte doubled a walk to Seth Smith and then the three run home run by Jed Jerko over the center field wall. So now in the second inning here come the Padres Rene Rivera the catcher and Alexi Amarista the shortstop and Ian Kennedy the pitcher. Rene from Bayamon in Puerto Rico and takes ball one one and old oh, account. He usually catches Kennedy. And as they always do, they look at the catcher's earned run average in handling the pitcher, and he comes up like 3.1. So he's doing very well. The 1 0 pitch on the way, and Rivera takes low. Two balls and no strikes. Rene Rivera was originally drafted by the Mariners, came up to the Mariners in 04, bounced around a lot in the minor leagues, came up briefly with the Twins, and then last year with San Diego. The 2 0 pitch, ground ball into left field, base hit. So a rather shaky debut for Ian Kennedy Nine and eight. for Kevin Correa. Number Kennedy five. breezed, however, Shortstop. but now Correa gives up Lexi. another base hit to the leadoff man, and that'll bring up Alexi Amarisa. Correa, who at one time was with San Diego, he pitched for the Padres in 09 and 10. He won 12 games in 09. And 10 games the following year, and then moved on. And here's Amarista checking in. Amarista, switch hitter, and takes it. Missing ball one, one and zero. Oh. One of the things that uh, Alexei has done is steal third. If he gets to second base, look out. He has stolen third five times. He's five seven, about 150 from Venezuela. The 1 0 pitch swung on, another base hit into left field. So all of a sudden, first and second, nobody out. And the batter is the pitcher, Ian Kennedy. So Kevin Correa, a very shaky debut in a Dodger uniform. When he faced Atlanta, he beat them, did well, six innings. Dodgers now going to the mound trying to give him one of those hang in there's. So he gave up a double, a walk, and a home run in the first inning. Back-to-back -back singles 
with nobody out in the second. Kennedy has three sacrifices. And the chances are he's going to be asked to drop one down. So the Trojan from SC fight on coming up in a sweet spot for the pitcher. Two on nobody out. Dodgers look bunt Kennedy shows bunt misses it runners have to hold 0 and 1 they count so Ian backs out looks down to Glenn Hoffman Jose Valentin coaching at first interesting contrast for these two teams Padres say better at home than on the road and the Dodgers certainly play better on the road than they do at home Dodgers are just a break even 30 30 at home. Strike one pitch, the bunt is fouled away, and the count 0 and 2. So no balls and two strikes, but Black has sent the message out to Glenn Hoffman. Kennedy hitting 103. He does have a home run, and four runs batted in. Dodgers still look bunt. Two on, nobody out. Strike two pitch. Kennedy tries to bunt, misses, and strikes out. So you wonder why they want pitchers to bunt in batting practice. Blow up a relatively simple job, get the bunt down, but he couldn't do it. So the runners hold with one out. No Big break for Correa. And now Jan Solarte is coming up. He flied to center in the first inning deep. So Solarte. A switch hitter filed by Almonte, who switches. Solarte in his brief time, hitting 276. Correa checks, ready, delivers, ground ball to short. The quick flip for one, the turn by Gordon for two, and that's what the doctor ordered, all because Kennedy couldn't get the bunt down. So the Dodgers say thank you very much. No runs, two hits, one left at the end of an inning and a half. 3 nothing, San Diego. to nothing San Diego say don't forget Sunday Dodgers and the New York Mets at 110 and the first 40,000 fans in attendance take home a Mac Kemp figurine presented by New Era for tickets and more information be sure to visit Dodgers.com slash promotion Mac Kemp will start it off followed by Carl Crawford and then Justin Turner you might be interested we've been watching several pitchers and break down their performance according to the number of pitches in the game. For instance Ian Kennedy in his first 15 pitches this year has allowed three home runs. Well he's made 13 without that. 
pitch to Matt Kemp is taken a strike and the count 0 and 1 off speed at 82. The opposition hitting 260 against Kennedy in his first 15 pitches. Now the strike one pitch ground ball to third on it easily is Solarte to make the play. So Kemp taps out and we have one down here in the second inning. So now Kennedy will move to the next ladder. That would be 16 to 30 pitches. During that stretch, the opposition is hitting only 230, and he's only allowed one home run. When he gets to 31 pitches, then it gets pretty interesting. So here's Carl Crawford batting 259, four home runs, 26 runs batted in. Kennedy into the windup, the right hand to Deals, line drive, base hit to left field. So Crawford, who is indeed a first ball swinger, lines one to left, hit number one against Kennedy, and the batter is Justin Turner. Number 10, Justin Turner. So Justin Turner coming up, filling a big role at third base for Juan Uribe. Turner hitting 305, three home runs, 25 runs batted in. Justin hitting 317 against right hand pitching and two home runs right handed. Kennedy a high set over the top, fastball off the plate, ball one, one and oh the count. So Turner, the lad from Long Beach, backs out for the moment, looks down to Bundy who has given him a wide berth as far as staying out of the coach's box. One and oh the count to Justin Turner. Kennedy set comes back with a fastball and that's in at the knees and they count one ball and one strike. Kennedy has to be very accustomed to pitching against the Dodgers. This is his 15th career start against L.A. and the fourth against the Dodgers this year. He's five and five lifetime and two and two in the games he has pitched here at Dodger Stadium. Kennedy by the way. It's also interesting as to how he pitches depending upon how many days rest he gets. Here's the one one pitch on the way. Kennedy delivers high and away ball two. his record in his career. Ian Kennedy on four days rest is 15 games above 500 on five days rest. He is five games under 500 and tonight he's going on five days rest. See what all that means two and one the count to Justin Turner. Veteran right handed delivers and the next one finds the mark and that evens it up two balls and two strikes. Waiting on deck, Aruba Reina and then Ellis. Kennedy was on a Yankee team back in 2007 and 8 and missed out, perhaps pitching in the World Series. The next pitch to Turner misses, and that runs the count to 3 and 2. He had a bad back. So Turner goes all the way. Crawford at first one out you know Crawford runs well Dodgers down however three nothing in the second inning it was like Sunday's game in the blink of an eye they were down five nothing six nothing and seven nothing Crawford goes pitch is swung on hit to the gap and left center on the dead run is Seth Smith he can't get it Crawford held up for the moment. Now he's around third and will score on a long double by Turner, and that makes it three to one, San Diego. So Justin Turner finds the gap in left center. A long double to chase in Crawford, who is going on a three and two pitch. Fastball just above the knees, outside part of the plate. Smitty tried to catch it, but couldn't do it. Crawford, meanwhile, held up to see if it was going to be caught, and when it missed Smith's glove, he breezed in without a play. So it's three to one, 
as Justin Turner responds with a key hit. Justin with 26 RBIs and his 13th double. So Smith so near and yet so far couldn't quite reach it. And the batter now, Aruba Reina. Harris Bell, right hand batter, swings and he slaps it into right field for a base hit. Here comes Turner. He will score easily. Just like that, it's Padres three, Dodgers two. And from the bottom part of the lineup. So Aruba Reina, a line drive single to pick up Turner. Fastball around the knees, same like Turner, and he just bangs it into right field. No chance to make a play on Turner, but they wanted to keep Aruba Reina at first base. He's the tying run. So now A.J. Ellis coming up. Turner back into the dugout. San Diego three, Dodgers two, bottom of the second. Kennedy now working on Ellis. Aruba Reina off the bag and the pitch to A.J. in for a strike. 0 and 1. No balls and one strike to count. Harris Bell Aruba Reina has the nickname Cricket and the Crickets at first and the pitch to A.J. Ellis is low. One ball and one strike. Aruba Reina, by the way, has two less letters than Salta La Macchia, of those of you who are counting letters. Two less. One ball and one strike to count to A.J. Slow breaking ball, missing down and away. Kennedy's been trying to keep the ball down as we show those watching. A double R U E B A double R E N A. Aruba Reina. Two and one to count to A.J. Ellis. Kennedy set. Comes to the plate and gets the inside corner with an off speed pitch. Ellis frozen to take it. That had to look a little bit like a lollipop, but he was locked in looking for something else. 27 pitches, and he's not now in that real danger zone. That begins on his 31st pitch. Kennedy looks over at Ara Morena. And he bluffs, and Kennedy gives up a pitch that's lined to third. The throw to first, not in time. So A.J. lined it at Solarte, who threw low, pulling Gobert off the bag. And Aruba Reina is safely back. Number 35. So a line drive right at the third baseman, Solarte. Had he make an accurate throw to first base, he would have had a double play easily for the flow way off and pull Gobert off the bag. But Solardi held with a line drive. Nice effort by Gobert, who's also an outfielder, by the way. And here is Kevin Correa, who finds himself back in the game. And he takes low, ball one. One and oh. Correa with a couple of base hits in the game he started against Atlanta. Picked up the victory. One ball and no strikes to Kevin. Kennedy out of a stretch ready and delivers and the pitch floats in there nicely one and one it's rare to see the number eight man or even the number seven man try to steal with the pitcher at the plate and two out Aruba Reina off the bag and the one one pitch taken inside at the hands ball two two and one to Kevin Correa Carl Crawford with one out single scored on the double by Turner who scored on the single by Arrow Morena and it is three to two San Diego Kennedy ready now the two one pitch Correa takes a strike and that makes the count two and two so if the numbers hold up Kennedy as we mentioned not as effective on four days rest as he is on five and he's working on five days rest which means He's five games under 500. 2 2 pitch on the way, in there for strike three call. That does it for Correa. However, the Dodgers get two singles and a double. Crawford scores, Turner scores, and at the end of two, three to two in favor of San Diego. And the big blow had to be Turner to knock in one, and then he scored on the base hit by Ara Barrena.
Dodgers 3-2 in the owner's box at Dodger Stadium. A familiar figure, that would be Magic Johnson. But sitting alongside Magic, the new owner of the Clippers, Steve Ballmer, and the coach of the Clippers, Doc Rivers. Taking it all in as we go to the third. Abraham Almonte, who doubled to right with one out in the first inning and got the ball rolling for the Padres. Almonte will start it off. He was acquired by the Padres from the Seattle Mariners. Shows bunt, takes a strike, and the count 0 and 1. He's only had a few at bats. Nevertheless, an impressive 313 batting average with a home run and five runs batted in. The strike one pitch, a change high, one and one the count. Almonte joined his new ball club the first of August, so he's only been here a little while. This would be his eighth start. One ball and one strike, and the next pitch fouled away off to the left. One ball and two strikes the count. Almonte spent a good portion of the year in the Seattle minor leagues playing in Triple A Tacoma. And he hit 267. So prior to tonight, he had played in 27 major league games. One ball and two strikes to Abraham Almonte. Correa ready, comes back inside with a fastball. Two and two the count. If you joined us late, with one out in the first inning, Almonte doubled, Seth Smith walked, Jed Jerko homered. It was 3 nothing San Diego. But the Dodgers had Crawford single, Turner double him home, and Ara Barrena single home Turner. So it is 3-2 Padres just starting in the third inning. That's a lot of runs in the first two innings for the Padres and Dodgers. We mentioned at the outset in 10 games prior to tonight the total runs for both teams only 49 but Jerka with one swing of the bat got them well in a hurry two and two the count to Almonte swung on hit down the left field line slicing foul and going back into the stands still two and two he wanted to break those 49 runs down in 10 games. The Dodgers average 2.7 runs a game, and the Padres 2.2. Padre pitching, as Don Mattingly can tell you, watching, probably the best in team history. Their overall team pitching earned run average is 3.1. There is a beach ball loose by the scoreboard in left field. Timeout for the moment. And we'll be ready to get going again in a moment. Tomorrow night, former Dodger left-hander Eric Stoltz, and he'll go up against another newcomer, Roberto Hernandez. There's a drive to right. Coming up is Camp. Tries to think about sliding and then decides to catch it on a bounce. You could see Matt angling a little to his right side. Thinking maybe I'll charge and slide, and at the last minute he held up, played it on a bounce. So Almani, a double and a single. Kemp starts to think about sliding and then jams on the brakes instead, and it's a single to right. So Almani is two for two. That is five hits and three runs charged against Kevin Correa. And now a lot of trouble with Seth Smith hitting 350 in his career. Against Korea. Kevin straightens up, set at the belt. They load up the right side of the infield, and the pitch down and away, ball one. Turner on the other side of the bag, along with Gordon and Gonzalez. Aru Barena all alone at the shortstop spot. Seth Smith, pretty much of a pull hitter, takes away again, ball two. But if they're going to pitch him away, they have to keep the outfield straight away. Seth has power. As we mentioned, he shares the honor with Mike Trout. He leads his team in doubles, triples, and home runs. And the same thing for young Mike with the Angels. 2-0 pitch on the way. 
Correa set, backs off the rubber, and Almonte back to the bag. Almonte has not been involved in a stolen base, but he probably can run pretty well if he plays center field. Held on by Gonzalez. The 2 0 pitch to Seth Smith. Correa ready. Kevin delivers as a ground ball, foul ball, foul ball. It was fielded by Gonzalez, but the first base umpire, Mike Everett, called it foul immediately. A needless throw. Of course, Gonzalez with the umpire behind him didn't know it was foul, so he threw it down to second base, and a lot went on that didn't mean a thing. Gonzalez backhanding the ball in foul ground, got it down to Turner, hard slide by Almonte. And all to no avail. So a lot of grins on the field. Two and one to count. Seth looking down to Jose Valentin, Glenn Hoffman, as usual, coaching at third. And now the man from Ole Miss, Seth Smith, checks in. Two balls and one strike to count. Watching Almonte, he does not go, and the pitch low and inside on a check swing, and it's a bum check. It doesn't pass the bank, and it doesn't pass third base umpire Bill Miller, and the count goes two balls and two strikes. Seth Smith trying to hold up on a pitch down and in, but you can see watching on TV that bat went way out in front of home plate. And they nail him for a strike. Two and two the count. So Seth back up. And the 2 2 pitch on the way. Smith looks and it's ball three. For a fellow who has all those extra base hits, doubles, triples, and home runs, Seth's pretty good. Struck out 64 times. And then, of course, he has Jerko hitting back of him in the cleanup spot. Three and two, nobody out. So since Smith doesn't strike out a lot, let's see what that means about Almonte. Almonte goes. The pitch tapped foul off to the left out of play. Though Abraham will come back to first. Bud Black running Almonte since I guess he felt confident that Smith would get a piece of the ball. But the problem is, in order to stay up there, Smith actually fouled what would have been ball four. That'll happen sometimes in a run and hit. Hit and run, you're obligated to swing, and sometimes run and hit, you do the same thing. You chase one you don't have to. It would have been ball four. All right, Almonte back to first. We'll see if he goes. Yep. And Seth lines one foul down the left field line out of play. So they run the play again. Almonte going. Three and two the count. And Smith backing away. He's been in 105 games. He's having a fine year, is Seth Smith. Almonte just joining the ball club. So when you see a hitter in the number three lineup, you know he's the best hitter on the team. Three and two the count. Well, you would expect Almonte to be going three times in a row. Correa set. Almonte goes, and it's fouled away again. So Abraham Almonte who is two for two tonight. He now has a little three game hitting streak. In fact Almonte was three for 11 in the Cardinal series did well. He had a couple of RBIs. First time we've seen him. Jose Valentin pointing out a lesson or two to go from first to second. And the three two pitch coming up to Seth Smith again. Correa ready. And backs off the rubber. So it's been obvious three pitches in a row, Almonte has been going three and two. Almonte in the minor leagues stole as many as 36 bases, so you know he can motor. So he takes the lead. There he goes. This time it's swung on and missed. The throw to Turner is there waiting for him. So AJ a perfect throw to Justin Turner who is straddling the bag and that'll do it for Almonte. 
So the play technically would be 2 4, except it was a third baseman that made the play. So if you want to make sure that you know it was Turner, you might as well make it 2 5 on the strikeout. So that was quite a battle, and the Dodgers win it. And with two out, here is Jed Jerko, who won his battle in the first inning. Jerko looks at a strike, and they count 0 and 1. The Mountaineer from West Virginia, Jed Jerko, hitting 202. He is a heck of a lot better hitter than that would account, but he's been banged up on the DL. Strike one pitch on the way is fouled off. 0 and 2. Might take a look for the Jed Jerko West Virginia Marching and Chowder Society. He got a fastball and hit it over the center field fence right at the hitter's backdrop. And the first thing Correa did was get rid of his gum. Jerko waiting, no balls and two strikes. Correa into the windup. And the right hander deal swung on and foul back. When San Diego plays Colorado, and if Jorge De La Rosa is pitching for Colorado, Bud Black certainly knows that Jerko wears him out. He is seven for 11. Brandon McCarthy, who was traded by Arizona, however, he was 0 for 14 against Brandon. Strike two changeup is swung on and missed, and that will be that. No runs, one hit, two strikeouts, no one left, and at the end of two and a half innings, three to two, San Diego. Three two San Diego bottom of the third inning a lively beginning and the Dodgers will start off with D Gordon followed by Yasiel Puig and then Adrian Gonzalez. The Gordon grounded out in the first inning that was that play when Gobert went pretty far off the bag that made it a very close play at first and Kennedy and Gordon got their feet locked and both went down heavily but fortunately. Both were okay, got up and continued. The so Gordon 0 for 1 checking in. Ian Kennedy, who gave up two singles and a double and two runs in the second inning, begins the third with a fastball off the outside part. One ball and no strikes. So D, who makes things happen, trying to do just that. Gordon 0 for 4 on Sunday. 0 for his last eight. Shows bunt. Takes the pitch low and inside. And I think that might have hit the plate umpire Chad Fairfield. But right on the foot. Two balls and no strikes to count. 
Dodgers are behind three to two and that's not a good sign for this team at least so far this year. Two o pitch on the way breaking ball in for a strike two and one the count. The Dodgers have 18 come from behind victories. That's the fewest in the major leagues. So they are front runners by and large. Two one pitch on the way to Gordon he bunts foul and the count two and two. So Gordon back up. Two balls two strikes just starting the bottom of the third inning. Waiting on deck Yasiel Puig and then Adrian Gonzalez. Kennedy looks over the tips of the glove now to the full wind up big curveball down and in swung on and missed. So Gordon has a pitch just come big rainbow and then at the last moment it broke in. So maybe he calls it the slider but it sure looks more like a now curve nine. and down goes Seven Gordon. So one out in the third. That's the second strikeout for Ian Kennedy and the batter now Yasiel Puig. In fact, we would make that the third strikeout since he also had Correa. So three strikeouts for Ian Kennedy. Kennedy has always been a strikeout pitcher anyway, and Yasiel Puig takes off the plate. Kennedy the year he won 21 struck out 198. Puig tied up and the count goes one ball and one strike. Kennedy coming into this game at 163 strikeouts so he hasn't changed in that area at all. One ball and one strike the count. Puig waits swings fouls it away and the count one and two. So Gobert and Jerko, Amaristi and Solarte, Smith, Almonte and Liriano, and Rivera behind the plate. Last we heard, the Cubs were leading the Giants two to nothing, bottom of the fifth, and there has been a serious rain delay, and it is still raining. Off speed, hit slowly up along third, fair, fair, and goes foul. So Puig tried to leg it out, but a wise play by Solarte to let the ball decide the issue. So Yasiel coming back on a one and two count. Little dribbler stayed on the grass for a while. Once it get left the grass, it was going to go foul, and all Solarte had to do was wait to make it official. So Yasiel coming back. One ball two strikes one out. Forty two pitches and this has been and still is a dangerous area for Kennedy. His fastball is just off the plate and they count two and two. Between thirty one and forty five pitches. The average against him is three oh one and two home runs. But he's so far so good. Only two more to get out of this. The inning and pitches that have hurt him. 2 2 on the way, low ball three, 93 mile an hour fastball. So this will be his 45th pitch. Big difference when he gets to 46. The opposition average drops from 301 to 247. So this is a big pitch for him with one out, bases empty in the third, and the Padres leading 3 2. Yasiel back up and waiting. Kennedy into the windup. 3 2 pitch is swung on and missed, and down goes Puig. Yasiel thought about slamming the bat, throwing the bat, but held himself in check. So that's four strikeouts for Ian Kennedy, and three in a row. Take another look. It was out of the strike zone in the dirt. That's why Puig was so angry. So if you start chasing the slider in the dirt, and Puig is a very frustrated young man, he's muttering to himself. Slams the helmet down and it bounced back where he caught it. Nothing like striking out, and he struck out twice. So here's Adrian Gonzalez, and he takes a straight change on the outside corner for a strike. Gonzalez 
fly to center to Almonte in the first inning. Now this is a zone for Kennedy where the opposition is hitting only 247. The next pitch breaking ball and a swing called by Bill Miller. Oh and two the count. So with three consecutive strikeouts. Ian Kennedy now has Gonzalez no balls to strike. Kennedy looks to Bauer getting the sign and the strike two pitch is lifted foul off to the left and out of play. So from now until 60 pitches Kennedy has pitched very well and then from 61 to 75 he's pitched even better. The next troublesome area for him will start on pitch 76. Here's the strike two pitch on the way Gonzalez fouls that away. That was a fastball up and in. Oh and to the count. Kennedy in his career in the major leagues has two complete games. Ian Reddy in the strike two pitch on the way high and away ball one. And one thing about the starting pitching for San Diego. They know their bullpen does not lose games. Only three times has the bullpen let a possible victory get away all year. One two pitch is a comebacker. Kennedy has it flips it easily over to first. That'll do it for Gonzalez and for the Dodgers. And at the end of three San Diego three and the Dodgers two. The Dodgers 3 2, top of the fourth inning. Be sure to join us for the next episode of Backstage Dodgers as we join Drew Butera with a visit to the Georgia Aquarium. Don't miss this new episode of Backstage Dodgers. That'll be Thursday at 5 right here on Sportsnet LA. Jake Gobert, followed by Reimer Liriano and then Rene Rivera. Little guy. <laughs> Working around, a little energy. Hello there, Tiger. Plenty of room to run. And ball one to Gobert, who grounded out to Adrian Gonzalez in the first inning. They load up the right side. So that means Aruba Barrena all alone on the left. And a fly ball into shallow center three coming and puts it away. So one down and Reimer Liriano coming up. Reimer Liriano. Liriano right hand batter. 
signed with the Padres about seven years ago. He had a good year in the Arizona Rookie League and then he started moving up the ladder and finally came here. He was delayed however with Tommy John surgery. It happens not only to the pitchers. The Liriano lost all of 2013. He's an even six 220 and in the minors stole as many as 65. Well there's another beach ball loose so time out for the moment. Liriano has some tools as they say you grade him out. He does a a lot of things right on the baseball field. Still a little rough around the edges, they say, but uh, he's getting better every day. They're very high on him. They say that for at least three years, he had the strongest and most accurate arm in the Padre organization, only to have to have Tommy John surgery. Ground ball to Arabarena. He gets it over to Gonzalez in time, but to his credit, at least. Lariana made it close. He was racing down the line. So two down here in the fourth inning and Rene Rivera coming up. Padres got three in the first inning. Almonte double Smith walk Jerko a three run home run. Dodgers in the second had Crawford single Turner doubled him home. Arubarena singled home Turner. So we're in the fourth three two San Diego. Ball one to Rene. We were talking earlier about the fact his earned run average, as they talk about catchers handling Kennedy, is exactly three. But when they look at the games in which he has caught 59 games, his earned run average, if there is such a thing for a catcher, and I think you know what I mean, is 2.7. That's the best catcher ERA in the majors. Chopper foul. One and two the count to Rene Rivera. We saw him play a little first base against the Dodgers. He's only done that a couple of times. He's basically a catcher and a good one. Rene Rivera. 31 years old from Puerto Rico. One ball and two strikes. Next one missing two and two. Kevin Correa trying to get over that three run first inning and settle in. Rivera with a lot of reasons to succeed. His wife presented him with twins. In March, fouls another pitch away. Twin girls. Two balls, two strikes, and two out. Three to two, San Diego, top of the fourth inning. Correa, veteran pitcher, has been pitching for a living since 2002 and came up to the big leagues 2004. Overhand breaking ball swung on and missed. So he's now retired five in a row. And at the end of three and a half innings, it's three to two, San Diego. Matt Kemp will be followed by Crawford, be followed by Turner in the bottom of the fourth inning.
On Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the all-new Chrysler 200, America's import, and by Subway. Try this month's $6 featured footlong, the barbecued oven roasted chicken milk. Subway, eat fresh. Bottom of the fourth inning, San Diego leading the Dodgers 3-2. Matt Kemp followed by Carl Crawford and then Justin Turner. Matt Kemp grounded out in the second inning, which means he is now 0 for his last 13. However, in his last 20 games, he had seven home runs and was hitting 295, though trying to come out of it now against Ian Kennedy. And line to left, and that's going to land. And by the time Seth Smith comes up with it on the track, why well, match into second base standing with a double. So the tying run is out there with nobody out. And for Matt Kemp, he has snapped that 0 for 13. The second double for the Dodgers. Justin Turner had one in the second inning, and now Matt leads off with a double here in the fourth. So with the Padres leading 3-2, Crawford, Turner, and Aru Barena have the chance to get Kemp home and tie up the ball game. So the Dodgers looking for three, and that's the number worn by Crawford. Ball one. Kennedy fastball in at the ribs. Crawford lined a single to left and came around to score on Turner's double. Turner waits on deck. Crawford a little late, but his bat is so quick. He decided, I think he was hesitating about going after that pitch. It looked like from up here it was out of the strike zone. Then he decided to swing, and the pitch was almost past him, and he was still able to pull it foul. One and one. Two and one. Ian Kennedy came in with a record of nine and ten. Zero oh and one against the Dodgers this year. Five and five lifetime. Two balls, one strike. Kennedy with the tying run behind him. That's Kemp at second base. And a pickoff throw down. Not in time. Meanwhile, Crawford came up empty at the plate. And the count, two balls and two strikes. Three runs, five hits for San Diego. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. And that's fouled off. 91 mile an hour fastball. Two and two to Crawford. Waiting is Turner. Boy, he's been a valuable bat in the Dodger lineup all year. Did that get him? Boy, he just did get out of the way. Fastball at the ribs. Three and two. Hmm. And it was even closer than that if you were here looking. So Kemp at second, waiting for a lift home. Little ground foul. Still three and two. One of the things that Kennedy has done, he's been hurt on the three and two pitch. That count has has hurt him. In fact, he's allowed as many hits on a three two count, fourth highest in the league. Should be noted he's also struck out four tonight. 
And that's going to go foul down the line out of play. Kennedy staying with the fastball. With Puig, he went three and two and threw a slider in the dirt. And Yasiel went after it and was furious at himself. Three and two again. Change up for ball four. Wow. After those fastballs in, he had a change up away. So now the Dodgers have first and second, nobody out. And Justin Turner coming up, and the change way off the plate. And the Dodgers have something going now. Turner doubled in the second inning. Seth Smith on the dead run, just missed catching it as it went to the wall. That not only scored Crawford, it didn't take long for Aru Barena to single Turner home. So now, two on, nobody out, Turner and Aru Barena waiting on deck. Kennedy's first walk, he's given up two runs, four hits and a walk while striking out four. <laughs> the center back goes Almani to the track can't make the play it's against the wall two runners in a sprint one behind the other Kemp is coming to the plate and he will score stopping at third is Crawford I mean they look like they were racing each other and for a moment it looked like Crawford was going to catch Kemp and the Dodgers have tied it up as Kemp with a big grin goes into the dugout, I'm sure he could hear footsteps directly behind him, and it was Crawford ready to run up his back. It was a curveball, a hanging curve, and Turner probably bangs it just over the glove, in fact, off the glove of Almonte. Now here's the foot race. Kemp looking back, and then Crawford stopped, and Matt came home with a slide. So the Dodgers have not only tied it up, much to the delight of D. Gordon, and there are runners at second and third. So a lot of laughs in the Dodger dugout, and the pitch now to Abu Barainer is swung on and missed 0 and 1. So Turner, another double, just off the glove of Almonte, scoring Kemp and sending Crawford to third. Almonte might very well make that catch many times. One and one to count. Aruba Reina had that base hit to pick up Turner. Now he's up there trying to advance Crawford and Turner. 3-3, three, three, bottom of the four. Crawford at third, Turner at second. One and one. And that's a strike. That looked like a slider. One and two the count. For Kennedy, he is not living up to where he is in his pitch count. One and two. Two and two. 61 to 75. The opposition hitting 219 against him. But the Dodgers now in the middle 60s have roughed him up for a double, a walk, and another double. So Bud Black, Darren Ballsley, Dave Roberts anxiously watching Kennedy. And that's ball three. Interesting what has happened. When Matt Kemp came up, he hit the first page for a double. When Crawford came up, it was a nine pitch at bat, and he walked. And then Turner walked up and hit a first pitch off the center fielder's glove. Three and two again. And that's off the plate. So Rubarena draws a walk. And the bases are loaded. Nobody out. A.J. Ellis coming up. But remember, if the most frustrating, the toughest time for the Dodgers all year is their inability to cash in a bases loaded situation. 
They're hitting 174, which is the lowest in the major league. Maddening, I'm sure, for Don Mattingly. And we'll see about A.J. Ellis. Crawford's at third. Turner's at second. Arubarena's at first. Nobody out. Dodgers with a golden opportunity to break it open. High fly ball into right center. That'll be deep enough to get Crawford. The catch by Almonte. The other two runners tag on a one hop of the third base. Crawford comes in, and for the first time tonight, the Dodgers lead 4 3, and A.J. Ellis does the job with a sack fly. Almonte, the center fielder, really took Luriano out of the play, and Almonte got off a great throw to third base. So the Dodgers now lead 4 to 3. Runners at first and second, one out. Padres think maybe he'll be bunting, even though there is one out. Dodgers have scored twice to lead 4 3. Showing bunt. Korea, yep, did not bunt. Tried to and then just got the bat back. So in the inning, Kemp double, Crawford walk, Turner double, Arubarena walk. The sack fly and the Dodgers have scored twice to lead 4 3. And they're still laughing over the foot race with Matt Kemp and Paul Crawford right behind him. I remember a couple of Dodgers, it's back, oh gee whiz, when they were playing the New York Mets and both Dodger runners, I think, were tagged out at the plate. One of them was Jeff Kent and uh, maybe it was J.D. Drew. Anyway, the Dodger foot race, Crawford stopped immediately and Kemp just meet the play. But in New York, both Dodgers ran into outs at home plate. Well, that's a long time ago. Meanwhile, it's four to three in favor of the Dodgers. Matt Kemp starting it with the double. So Korea with a one ball, no strike count. And the base runners, Turner and Arubarena, Ready to move. He's showing bunt and gets it down. The play is on a bounce and it gets away at third base. And let's see, I think they're going to call third baseman Solarte in obstruction. That's for sure. Turner will score and the Dodgers will have runners at second and third. Solarte did really, in all honesty, everything he could do to prevent Turner from scoring. But the Redhead found a way. He would have been allowed home anyway because third base umpire Bill Miller indicated obstruction. Here's the throw on a bounce, and then when it gets away, Turner's getting up and Solardi's all over him. And Justin fought his way back up to a land pull and he comes home. And Miller immediately indicated for all of us that there was obstruction. Good throw might have got him. Instead, the Dodgers have now scored three times and runners at second and third. 0 oh and 1 the count to D. Gordon. Three runs in the inning brought in by Kemp, Crawford, and Turner. That's in the dirt and a good block by Rene Rivera. So Kemp doubled and Crawford Ward. Turner doubled in Kemp, ball going off the glove of Almonte. Arubarena walked. A.J. Ellis, the fly ball to pick up the run on the sack fly. Correa then bunts. The throw by Gobert to third gets away. Dodgers get one. And now they have second and third with one out. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. Gordon hits it to third. A great backhand stab by Salarte. They now have Arubarena in a rundown, and he's tagged out. And Correa had nowhere to go at second. What a wonderful play that was by young Yang Solarte. A diving stop. Otherwise, that's down the line and two runs scored. Instead, with that great save, he had Arubarena in the rundown. And Solarte to Rivera, who made the tag. 
So Gordon is at first on the field as choice. There's an error we were waiting to hear. Remember the bounce throw by Gobert to Solarte and Turner eventually scoring. Gobert draws an error on that play. So Gordon robbed of an extra base hit. The run comes in. Dodgers have scored three to lead 5 3. And now here's Puig with two on and two out. And he hits a little bouncer back to Kennedy and he's done. So Puig goes 0 for 3. Dodgers have eight men come to the plate. Three of them come home. And at the end of four, it's the Dodgers 5 and the Padres 3. Top of the fifth inning. Zach Granke's a two time All Star Cy Young and Silver Slugger Award winner. And be one of the first 50,000 fans in attendance tomorrow night. You'll receive a Zach Granke bobblehead, compliments of Las Vegas. So for tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Tomorrow night, the Dodgers will feature Roberto Hernandez making his debut at Dodger Stadium. He'll go against former Dodger left hand Eric Stoltz and then Granke will pitch Thursday night against big Tyson Ross. Well the Dodgers Matt Kemp in the foot race with Crawford they both eventually scored as did Turner and the Dodgers take a 5 3 lead into the fifth inning. Alexi Amarista single left in the second inning. One for one. And a strike. Five runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Three runs, five hits for the Padres. One and one. Big puzzle, of course. You talk about the home field advantage, and the Dodgers don't have a home field advantage. They're only break even. The bunt fouled away. Dodgers are 30 and 30 at home, 40 and 26 on the road. Mattingly hollering foul. He thought maybe the ball had uh, hit Amarista. One and two. And that's fouled away. Chad Fairchild, by the way, is the plate umpire tonight. Chad's been umpiring in the big leagues for seven years. He's out of Ohio, makes his home in Florida. He was selected to the All-Star game, working right field in 2013, and in charge of balls and strikes. Two and two the count. Following Amarisa is Ian Kennedy. Who does have a home run this year? We'll tell you about that in a moment. 
But first, Amarista. Ground ball to short, backhanded. Wow, did he get rid of that in a hurry? Whoa. Arul Barena made it look so easy. And you have Amarista left handed who runs well. Take another look at this. I mean, this is a shortstop. On the money. Wow. That is really impressive. Well, they say he's a good one, and you have to be a good one to make that play. So one away. And now here is Ian Kennedy. His home run came at Petco against Jacob Turner, who was then with Miami. Both Kennedy and Turner were out of the game by the time Giancarlo Stanton hit a home run. Two run in the top of the 11th. And the Marlins won that game three to one way back in May. That home run by Ian is the only one in his career. He will take it. 0 oh and 2 the count. Showing bunt takes a walk to the bench. Five strikeouts for Correa. Who all of a sudden now is starting to feel at home. He retired six in a row since Almonte's single opening up the third inning. Remember when Seth Smith was fouling off pitches three and two, three and two. Almonte kept running. And eventually Almonte was running. Smith struck out and he nailed him. Hadn't been anybody on base since. Here's Solarte. Fly to center, hit into a double play. Jan made a good play, taking an extra base hit away from D. Gordon and getting an out at third on Arubarena. One ball and no strikes. In there. One and one. Janhavis Solarte. And a hopper by the diving Gordon in the right center. Let's see if he's thinking two. Puig comes up, so he thinks one. I mean, he was thinking two. If Kemp, who was going away from the play, if Kemp had come up with that ball, he would have gone for two. But when Puig came up, he jammed on the brakes. So with two out, you can take another look. It just goes by Gordon. Puig is a long way to go to get there. And when he picks it up, that does it. So Solardi with a long single to right center. And the batter, Abraham Almonte, who is two for two. So Puig with that cannon of an arm quiets a lot of extra base thinking by the runners. Nice save there by A.J. on a pitch in the dirt. Ball one. Almonte coming to them. Remember Chris DeNorfia? I'm sure you do if you were following Dodgers and Padres. Chris DeNorfia went to Seattle and Abraham Almonte came to San Diego. One ball, no strikes. Ball two. Almonte, 5'9, 205 pounder. Exciting player. Long drive by Turner went off his glove. And a ground ball base hit into right field. Solarte turning second on his way to third. And with two down now, now back to back hits by Solarte and Almonte. Seth. And Seth Smith coming up. Clean single and a good bit of footwork by Solardi to jump over the base hit. So Almonte having a fine night. He's three for three. First and third, two out. Seth Smith has walked and struck out. Smith has 12 home runs. Interestingly enough, eight of the 12 at Petco, three at Coors Field, where he played a great deal. And one at Target Field in Minnesota. 
four of his home runs of the 12 have come against the Dodgers. Dodgers still load up the right side. And ball one. The Turner all alone. It's Aru Barena to give them a little extra range with a left hand hitter. Seven of the Seth Smith's home run. Have come when he faces the start of the first time up. Tonight the first time up he walked. And that's going to be a base hit. Kemp over to get it on a bounce. Runners move up 90. So one run comes in. It's 5 4 in favor of the Dodgers. Number nine. Stopping second at second base. base is Almonte. Yeah. Solarte brought the run in. So Kevin Correa, pretty wobbly as he tries to hold on to a lead after seeing the Dodgers come from behind. Remember, they were down 3 0 in the first inning. So with two down, Solarte singled, Almonte single, Smith singles, and the run batted in. Five four Dodgers, two out, two on, and Jed Jerko, who hit that three run home run in the first inning, coming up. In the dirt, swung on and missed, and over to third goes the pesky Almonte. Oh and one to count. Take a look at that pitch. Going to wind up in the dirt and then gets off the mitt. It'll be a wild pitch to account for Almonte moving over to third. So the tying run is 90 feet away. Jamie Wright gets up in the Dodger bullpen. And Jerko for the count no balls and one strike. Oh and two. Jerko, as we told you, in his rookie year in 2013, he had 23 home runs, 63 runs batted in. They have played without him for quite a spell. Jerko has played in 75 games, and they played 124. Twenty five years old he'd be twenty six in September. One ball and two strikes. With Correa that wild pitch. That was his first wild pitch as a Dodger. He had three wild pitches while he was in the American League. So El Monday, the tying run is at the ready. One ball two strikes. In the dirt blocked nicely again by A.J. Ellis Seth Smith at first base. Smith doesn't do any running. He is not a base stealer. If a pitch gets away at the plate it would have to get a long way before he'd move. But Almonte and a right hand batter up. will have to watch an eye on him. Two balls two strikes two out. So the deuces are wild and we have two on at first and third. Just foul back. Jerko was certainly not drafted out of high school, so he chose a baseball scholarship to West Virginia. He was a second team freshman All American. And then the Padres signed him in the second round, 2010, and he was here in 2013. So it didn't take him long. He is a good solid ball player. Jed Jerko. Two and two. Almonte pretty good lead down the line and Jerko strikes out. However the Padres get close with two out they get three straight hits a wild pitch and pick up one. And at the end of four and a half, five, four, Dodge.
driven by your Southern California Mazda dealers. Adrian Gonzalez will start it off. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5 4 Dodgers. Adrian flied to center, hit back to the box. Correa working awfully hard in the fifth inning, made 23 pitches. So Kevin has made 81 pitches in his five innings. Meanwhile, Ian Kennedy's made 75. And into the bottom of the fifth we go. For Ian Kennedy, he has now come up to a bad sequence of pitches, at least this year. From 76 pitches to 90, and that's where he is right now. He has given up three home runs, and the opposition hitting 280 against him. 0 oh, and 2 the count. <laughs> Of course, really, they're only numbers, but it's kind of fun to have the numbers and apply them to the pitcher and just see how he makes out. 0 oh and 2. Change up. One ball, two strikes. One ball and two strikes to Adrian open up matters here in the fifth and a high fly ball but playable Seth Smith one away. So Adrian 0 for 3 and the batter will be Matt Kemp. Dungeons right fielder number 27 Matt Kemp. Matt was 0 for 12 coming into the game grounded out his in the second inning. And then led off the fourth with a double, and that ignited the Dodgers for a three run inning, and they took the lead. And a strike on the inside corner. 0 and 1 to Matt Kemp. Hitting 277, 15 home runs. 55 runs batted in. Oh, and two. Matt Kemp with a 55 knocked in has also scored 52. And a high fly ball to deep left field. Smith to the track at the wall, and it's off his glove. And Matt Kemp into second base, makes the turn, and will hold on. So that was catchable. Seth knows it. He should have caught that ball, but he didn't. It reminds you of the play Almonte made on the ball hit by Turner. So that looked like a catchable fly ball. Seth goes back. He's right there. Up in the air, opens a glove, and it comes out empty. So we'll see, do they give it a double or an error? If you're the pitcher, Ian Kennedy, and you're battling in a one-run game, you can't believe they're going to charge a double, but that's what they're going to charge. So Matt Kemp is fortunate. A glove double. He's two for three. Crawford now with a single and a walk trying to pick him up. In the dirt. Two and all the count. Kennedy walked two in the fourth inning. Dodgers cashed in one. The other was Aru Barena. Who was caught in the rundown after that great diving stop by Solarte? Two and one. Eddie now has made 85 pitches. 
interesting when he gets to 91. You think he'd be very tired. That's when he's really in command. Ian Kennedy this year from 91 and he's five away from that from 91 to 105. The opposition is hitting 147. So that's kind of the promised land for him. Two and two. Turner on deck. Kemp at second one out. When the Padres come up in the sixth inning Gobert Liriano and Rivera. And ball three. So another three and two count for Kennedy. When it's all said and done. He has walked two, struck out four. And Turner waits. He's got two doubles. And that's going to be a base hit to center. Almani charges and Kemp running right on through a stop sign and he scores. Bundy had his hands in the air and Matt was running under a full head of steam and he barely got in there. So the Dodgers lead six to four. So again, if you're Ian Kennedy, well, first let's take a look at the play. Here comes Kemp. We can't see Bundy, not on that shot. And Matt just did get in. Take a look at Bundy waving now, saying, "Stop, stop." Okay, good luck. And he makes it. So the Dodgers lead six-four. Very fortunate. I mean, Kemp gets a double on the ball that should have been caught, and then he runs through the stop sign on a base hit by Crawford and gets away with that. So Matt having a charmed life so to speak and the Dodgers lead 6 4. Justin Turner has two doubles. One of his doubles went off the glove of Abraham Almonte in center field. That was a much tougher play for Almonte than the one Seth Smith had. Seth should have caught the ball. So Crawford's at first, six to four Dodgers, one out. Oh, and two. Turner turning to say something to Chad Fairchild. Rivera was sitting way off the plate, but the pitch got the corner. No balls and two strikes. Six runs, seven hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Four runs, eight hits, one error for the Padres. Coming into this game, the Dodgers had beaten San Diego seven out of ten. Dodgers trying to snap a three game losing streak. They have not had a four game losing streak all year. And that's a fly ball to center. Almonte is there. Two down. And Aruba Reina coming up. Arizbel Aruba Reina single to right and walk. Made a wonderful play on the ball hit by Amarista in the fifth inning. To go into the hole and a left hand. Hitter like Amarista who can run like the wind. And the off balance perfect throw and he made it look so easy. Hmm. Six four Dodgers two out fifth inning. For Kevin Correa. As a starter he went the required five here's that play again. He just made it so effortless against a guy who runs very well. Wow. Amarisa, as a fellow shortstop, certainly would marvel at that play. 
One ball and no strikes. He's an even six, 195. Aruba Reina is only 24. From Cuba, from Cienfuegos. And ball two. Aruba Reina facing Ian Kennedy. The cricket, as they called him, down in the pen. Right handed getting up for San Diego, Nick Vincent. Arabuena got the nickname Cricket. That's the same nickname that his father had. The flexibility earning him the nickname. He played in Japan in 2013 in the World Baseball Classic. And he defected from Cuba in November of that year. And 3 and 0 the count. Arubarena was on the Cuban national team and his teammate was Yasiel Puig. 3 and 0. Oh. And there goes Crawford, the pitch, a strike, the throw, and a bounce, and late. So Crawford steals his 19, 19 out of 22. And a three and one count to Arubarena. Arubarena now checking quickly with Lorenzo Bundy. Three and two. Kennedy fighting to stay in. He is due to bat fifth when San Diego comes up in the sixth inning. The Bud Black, deep in thought, fine pitcher in his own right. Another three and two count. Kennedy's had a lot of those. And strike three called. So down goes Arubarena. The Dodgers settle for one. And at the end of five, it's 6-4 Dodgers. Way back in 1951, there was another team in St. Louis besides the Cardinals. They were the St. Louis Browns. And in July of that year, they were purchased by the greatest promoter baseball has ever had, a man by the name of Bill Vecht. 
And so there was a doubleheader on this day in 1951 in St. Louis. It was the Browns and the Detroit Tigers. And the first game, the Tigers won. There were 18,000 people in the ballpark. Second game began, Tigers made out, and the leadoff man went up, a pinch hitter named Eddie Goodell. He was three feet, seven inches tall. On his back of his uniform, his number was 1-8. The left-hander, Bob Kane of Detroit, started to laugh so hard, he walked him on four pitches. Well, baseball thought it was a travesty. Beck thought it was great. The crowd loved it, and everybody will forever remember the day that a three-foot-seven-inch batter appeared in the big leagues and won. Let's go back to this one. Jamie Wright comes in now to pick up for Kevin Correa with the Dodgers leading 6 4. Jake Gobert, the first baseman, rounded out, fly to center, 0 for 2. Dodgers load up the right side. It was interesting during the Milwaukee series, the only time the Brewers loaded up a sign, they did it once. And it was on the left side of the infield against Matt Kemp. Only time. And that's going to be a flare and drop into left field for a base hit. Would a shortstop be able to go out there and catch that? We'll never know. But if so, the Dodgers have one who might have, and that's a Rubarena. So Gobert gets a little flare, and that'll bring up Reimer Liriano. Kevin Correa. Allowed four runs and eight hits. Five innings. He retired the side in order only once. So here now is Liriano against Wright. Last time that Jamie pitched, remember, he had that horrific inning where the Dodgers were leading Milwaukee 2 0. And in the blink of an eye in the eighth inning against Jamie, they scored five times. Oh, and one the count. That's another strike. Oh, and two. Luriano. Only 23 years old, an even six, 220 out of Santa Domingo. And down he goes. So Liriano strikes out. He's 0 for 3. Gobert holding at first. Rene Rivera, the catcher, coming up. Correa in his five innings struck out six. Rivera got a base hit leading off the second inning, struck out in the fourth. One out, sixth inning, six to four Dodgers. Still nothing new. It was in the bottom of the fifth inning at Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Cubs were leading two to nothing, and it was pouring rain, and still no report. That is an official game, remember, because the Cubs in the fifth inning were leading two nothing. Fouled away, one and one. Ian Kennedy has made 97 pitches in five innings. So he's still looking like he is ready for action. You have Gobert at first, Rivera at the plate, Amarista on deck, and then Kennedy spot. One ball and one strike. Way out in front of an off speed pitch. One and two.
We mentioned earlier that uh, Ian Kennedy seemed to have quite a few three and two counts. And remember he gave up the three and two double to Turner and a three and two single to Crawford. He's allowed 19 hits on the three and two count. The top guy in that area James Shields of Kansas City and Kevin Correa has allowed 20 hits on a three and two count. Two and two the count. Jamie Wright has really worked hard for the Dodgers. He's in his 47th game. He doesn't overpower. Two to one. Strikeouts to walks. Little chopper to third. Short hop to play. Turner has the arm to get him. Nice play by Justin. Gobert advances to second. And with two down, Alexi Amarista coming up. So Justin Turner having a good night. Two doubles. And now making a nice play. Amarista single a left. And then he was thrown out on that marvelous play by Arubarena. It was not spectacular. It was just the way he did it. It was an eye opener. Will Venable, the left hand hitting outfielder, on deck. And the strike. So Venable. A veteran on deck to hit. The Kennedy would be out of the game. Should Amarista. Extend the inning. Nick Vincent the right hander throwing in the bullpen. And lifted to right field Kemp is there looking up into the night. And that's it. So now let's see whether. Bud Black sends Kennedy back out there or not. No runs one hit a man left. At the end of five and a half innings, it's six four Dodgers. Ahead for the ball club. Well, we're just beginning with San Diego. Two more games. It'll be Stoltz tomorrow night against Roberto Hernandez. And then it'll be Tyson Ross. And he'll go up against Zach Ranke Thursday. The Mets will be here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the club will go out briefly to Arizona and San Diego. Meanwhile, Nick Vincent will pick up now. Boy, Ian Kennedy, Vincent's a local boy as far as San Diego is concerned. He was born in Poway and lives in Ramona. Went to school at Long Beach State and was drafted in the 18th round. Played college ball at Palomar and then transferred to Long Beach State. He was a big Padres fan 
watched them play in Qualcomm and finally got the dream job to pitch for them came up to San Diego the first time in 2012. Nick Vincent facing A.J. Ellis and gets a strike. A.J. tonight lined out to third and had a scoring fly ball in the fourth inning. Little ground ball to Gobert. He'll underhand it to Vincent coming over. And we have one away here in the sixth inning. If you weren't with us earlier, Jed Jerko hit a three run home run in the first inning. Dodgers came back with two in the second. They had singles by Crawford and Arubarena and a double by Turner. Dodgers then came right back with three more in the fourth inning. Kemp and Turner double and Crawford and Arubarena walk. Padres scored in the fifth inning and that's it six to four Dodgers. Bottom of the sixth inning. The starters are the pitchers of record Correa and Kennedy. Jamie 19 years he'll be 40 in December. Two and oh. Jamie might be 40 in December but when you meet him. He is a very young man. His enthusiasm is just wonderful. Two and one boy he's up there taking a big cut. Jamie Wright out of Oklahoma City. He's big six feet six a good 230. And he'll be. Reach his age right around Christmas. In fact Christmas Eve he'll be 40. Signed by the Rockies way back in 1993 out of high school. Came up to the big leagues in 1996 and he is still playing. Ball three. So Nick Vincent trying to get some outs. He is due to lead off in the seventh inning so this figures to be his only inning. So Jamie hanging tough. Three and two. Certainly um, among other things in his long career talking about Jamie Wright. He has witnessed. 16 opening days in his career including the opening day in Australia starting this year still three and two Jamie talks about opening day at 2001 at Dodger Stadium with Milwaukee he started the game some controversy he said he remembers the crowd booing every time Gary Sheffield came up to the plate. He was matched up against Chan Ho Park and Sheffield hit a home run and they wound up beating him one to nothing and the crowd's boos turned to cheers. He said he'll never forget that. All right two out sixth inning and D Gordon coming up. Second baseman, D. Gordon. Gordon grounded to first, struck out, and was robbed of an extra base hit at diving backhand smothering stop by Solarte at third. The bunt, it's a good one. Vincent bare hands, throws, and got him. So Nick Vincent takes the play away from his third baseman, Solarte, makes a good play. Dodgers go down, he'll go out for a hitter, and at the end of six, Six to four, Dodgers.
to a 6-4 to four lead as we go to the top of the seventh. You know the Dodgers have had 22 no-hitters in their story franchise, and two of them occurred this season. Sure, and to commemorate the achievements of Josh Beckham and Clayton Kershaw, there'll be a pin giveaway for the first 40,000 fans September 1 and September 22nd, presented by 76. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash no hitter. Well, Jamie Wright has the pitching burden. He got the outs in the sixth inning. Now Jamie will go to work. And Chris Nelson will come up and bat for Vincent. So Nelson, the pinch hitter, hitting 250 with seven runs batted in. Nelson called up from El Paso. He had a memorable three hit game against Atlanta. Began the season in the Cincinnati Reds organization. So Nelson ready to go as is Jamie Wright. And into the seventh inning. Chris Nelson is from Escondido. But makes his home in Decatur, Georgia. Strike. When Nelson was a young fella, he helped lead his team to the Connie Mack World Series title. Chris has an infielder, plays short, third, second, but his idol was Pedro Martinez. Oh and two to Chris. 28 to be 29 first week in September, which come to think of it is just around the corner, isn't it? One ball and two strikes. When he plays his position, then he models his game after Miguel Tejada. Yeah, he imitated Pedro when he was playing Connie Mack. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. So Jamie Wright trying to get some outs here. Waiting on deck would be the leadoff man, Jan Solardis. Two balls, two strikes. Down he goes. So Jamie picks up his second strikeout. One out in the seven. And Solarte coming up. Take another look. Good fastball just threw it right by him. So down goes Nelson. Two strikeouts for Jamie Wright. Eight strikeouts. Total. Six for Correa. The G in his first name is pronounced like an H. Jan Hervis Solarte. He is flied to center, hit into a double play, single to center, and scored a run, and made a great play on the ball hit by Aru Barena in the fourth inning. Actually, Gordon hit the ball, and Aru Barena was cut down. Gordon behind the bag makes the pick but throws off the bag goes Gonzalez. So Solarte is safe and that figures to be a base hit. Uh, he'll be two for four and Abraham Almonte coming up. Gordon looks like he has him right there but he dropped his arm and as soon as you do that the ball has a tendency to sail. You get your hand under the ball. So an infield single. And here's Almonte bidding for a perfect night. Doubled and two singles. But with three hits. He scored a run on the home run by Jerko in the first inning. One out. 
high chopper. It'll be a Rubarena to Gordon on a bounce late at first. So Amante switch hit a batting left handed tough to double up. Force play will bring up Seth Smith. The fielder number 12 Seth Smith. Seth Smith walked struck out single to right but when the game is all over no doubt he will remember the fly ball that went off his glove and went for a double. So now let's see with the left hand hitting Smith coming up the Dodgers have had J.P. Howell so it is time for J.P. They don't want Smith to come up with one swing tie up the game. So with that in thought we'll be right back. Attention, please. Now coming into pitch for the Dodgers, number 56, J.P. Howell. mobile phone or tablet you'll get live look ins instant replays etc on MLB TV game of the day and a lot more so download on the app store or visit Dodgers.com today JP Howell is brought in to face Seth Smith they faced each other a few times Smitty is 0 for 3 he has walked twice however against Howell in the past for Jamie Wright a nice bit of relief and Howell now trying to pick it up for him. And a strike 0 1 1 Almonte at first base putting on a pretty good fake. Jose Valentin over to say something to him. Six four Dodgers seventh inning two out. So after that good fake not a bad idea for Howell to go over there. So Jamie Wright. Made twenty one pitches worked an inning in two thirds. Jimmy having a great career in fact when the Dodgers were in Anaheim. Jamie Wright appeared in his seven hundredth career game. That drops off the plate. One ball and one strike to Seth. Walked in the first inning, struck out in the third, single to right. He leads the Padres in doubles, triples, and home runs as Jamie looks on. One and one. Ball two, two and one. J.P. Howell coming out of the pen. He has a brilliant earn run average of 1.3. He's been in 56 games. Not quite two to one. 20 walks, 38 strikeouts. 
By the way, if you're wondering about the Giant game, we have some news. But first, the 2 1 pitch fouled away. They were in the bottom of the fifth inning and it rained and rained and finally it stopped. And then, and we're not sure about this because it's third hand, the grounds crew took its own sweet time to try and fix the field. And remember, since it was the bottom of the fifth and the Cubs were leading, it was an official game. The Giants, I'm sure, felt that the Cubs took much longer, but to speed it up, they are finally back to playing. It's about uh, 9.30 now, 11.30 in Chicago. Two and two. Well, Almonte at first, two out. It's six four Dodgers in the seven. Dodgers loaded up the right. Turner's all alone on the left. Just missed. Three and two. Jed Jerko had that three run home run in the first inning. He has struck out twice since. And Brandon League is up in the Dodger bullpen. We told you that Seth Smith leads the club in doubles, triples, home runs, and he also leads in walks. So he's been the power plant of this edition of the Padres. Two down, so Almonte will be going. And down goes Smith. So in the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, one left, and we're heading to the bottom of the seventh inning with the Dodgers leading six to four. Spirited Dodger Ball Club leading 6 4. Tough play by Salarte on that ground ball to third. He throws it away. 
the Puig will be awarded second base. The Salati going behind the bag. It'll be one and one. Take another look. Tough play. High chopper. He has to charge right at the bag. Off balance throw. Not in time. So one and one as they call it in the press box. It's a base hit for Puig who will gladly take it. He's one for four. And he takes second on the error charge to young Solarte. That would be the second Padre era. So Dale Thayer, who has done a fine job in relief, he's had scoreless ball in 27 of his last 31 outings. And remember, we were talking earlier about the pitching for the Padres, probably the best they have ever had. That's right, the best in team history. Ball one to Adrian Gonzalez. The bullpen has only lost three possible victories. The lowest number of inherited runners to score. That's 52 percent below the National League average. Two and oh the count to Adrian. 47 percent below the national average of allowing inherited runners to score. So not only the number but the rate. They've only blown six save opportunities. That's 250 percent below the national average. So he could go on and on about the Padre pitching and especially the bullpen. Two and one to count. Adrian tonight fly to center hit back to the box fly to left 0 for 3. Hitting 272. 17 home runs, 83 runs batted in. Two and one. And that's going to go foul down the line. That'll give us a chance to tell you the paid attendance tonight. 45,459. 45 four five nine and a reminder tomorrow night that will be Zach Granke bobblehead night hope you be out here two and two off speed pickoff play the throw nice pick down there by Amarista the so Puig back to the bag three and two the count on Adrian Gonzalez By the way, we get a report out of Chicago. The umpires have decided that more work must be done before the game can be resumed. Too many puddles still on the field. So they're not playing yet, and it's 20 of 12 in Chicago. Off speed, pull to the right side, dropped by Jerko, but he has plenty of time. Over to third goes Puig. So that would have been a perfect double play ball. Except Solarte had thrown away the ground ball. So it's a force that sends Puig over to third. And it's an opportunity for Matt Kemp. Kemp has grounded out two doubles, one of them a ball that should have been caught by Seth Smith. It went off his glove and was ruled a double. So two doubles and two runs scored. Infield has to come up with Puig at third and a strike. 0 and 1. So Thayer, who has had scoreless innings in 27 of his last outings, 27 out of 31, has a runner at third. But it was the throwing error. Otherwise, there'd be two out, nobody on. Matt has 55 runs batted in, 15 home runs. Dale Thayer's from Fountain Valley and Huntington Beach went to Cal State Chico. That's going to go foul down the line. He attended Edison High School before moving on. He'll be 34 in the middle of December. 
Six foot of 185, drafted by the Padres out of Cal State Chico. However, he came up with the Rays and finally made it to the Padres two years ago. Just off the plate. As good as their bullpen is, the Padres still felt that they could trade away Houston Street to the Angels. Two and two. Fouled away. Basically, with Thayer, no tricks. Fastball, slider, change up, which he uses a lot against lefties. He has Puig at third with one out. On deck, Carl Crawford. Left hander Alex Torres begins to loosen up now in the San Diego pen. In fact, he stopped for the moment. They always tell Torres with that liner inside his cap. Well, that might have been ball four. Matt's annoyed at himself. Looked like the pitch was up out of the zone. So he strikes out, losing a chance at a big RBI. Now Bud Black has dodged a bullet for the moment. And with Crawford coming up, I assume they will go to the pen. So Alex Torres will get the message. He'll be coming in in a moment. He's not quite ready. Now Black takes the ball from Thayer, who should have had the inning over. And we'll be right back. Carl Crawford. Carl Crawford is hitting 256 against left handers, but actually 259 against right handers. So he's had trouble from either side. And now Alex Torres will test him. As we said, he's got that big, thick, protective liner inside his cap. Alex is from Venezuela. He'll be 27 a couple of weeks before Christmas. 5'10", 175, and was originally signed by the Angels back in 2005. He never made it really with the Angels, but he did make it with the Rays. And now here he is facing Carl Crawford. And ball one. Torrey's in the dirt with that first pitch. So we will look it up. He has five wild pitches, so he's a risk. 
six four Dodgers. Bottom of the seventh inning. Puig at third with two out. And ball two. Waiting on deck, Justin Turner. Dale Thayer made 14 pitches and would have had a 1 2 3 inning, except for the throwing error. Check swing, they're going to look at third. Swing, says Bill Miller. Two and one to count. Boy, he fought to keep that back, didn't he? But Bill Miller said no. Torres worked in St. Louis. Picked up his second win of the season on Saturday. Two balls, one strike. I think that was intended to be a curveball and there was no break. And Rivera had to go up and get it. Take a look. He's down there and pitch just stayed up. Nice save by Renee. Three and one the count to Crawford. Pui at third with two out. And a drive to right. And back goes Liriano at the wall. Gone. So that's it for strategy. You bring a left-hander in against a left-hand batter. And you get a two-run home run. And the Dodgers now lead 8-4. to four. For Alex Torres, that's only the second home run that he's allowed this year. The Dodgers will certainly take it. So for Crawford, he's having a big night. A walk, two singles, a two-run home run, and a stolen base. So the home run, that's charged to Torres. And hard luck, Dale Thayer is charged with the run brought in by Puig. So eight to four Dodgers. And a strike now to Justin Turner. The Pui going over to congratulate Crawford. Eight runs, nine hits for the Dodgers. Four runs, ten hits for the Padres. They put the camera on Crawford and the crowd applauds. Meanwhile, Turner up there swings and misses, and that'll end the inning. But not before the Dodgers pick up two, all because of the wild throw by third baseman Solarte. And the bubbles are flying in the dugout. Dodger spirits are high. And at the end of seven, eight four Dodgers.
This is game one of the three game series. Dodgers leading eight to four as we go to the eighth inning. We'll match them up for tomorrow night. The new Dodger, Roberto Hernandez, will follow the new Dodger, Kevin Correa, and the old Dodger, left hand Eric Stoltz, will be on the mound for San Diego. That's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night will be Zach Ranky bobblehead night, and hope you'll be out here with us. By the way, Carl Crawford hit that big home run. After we look at Eric Stoltz. The last home run that Carl Crawford hit was in Philadelphia, May the 23rd. So he waited until August the 19th to hit a big one out tonight. J.P. Howell has just done a fabulous job for the Dodgers. Round foul. The definition of fabulous? Well, how about this? J.P. has inherited 33 base runners. And two have scored. Two. Needless to say, he's really been dynamite. One ball and one strike, they count. Tommy Medica will come out on deck and bat for Gobert and then Reimer Luriano. Gurko three run home run and then struck out twice. As they count his way three and one. Eight runs nine hits for the Dodgers four runs ten hits and two errors for San Diego. Hard ground ball but at the other end of it is turn. No one down. If you look closely at the game, you realize that some defensive shortcomings by the Padres have changed the game dramatically. Not just the errors like the throwing error by Solarte, but the plays that were not made. And Bud Black is very aware of the ball that went off Almonte's glove, the ball that certainly should have been caught by Seth Smith, then the throwing error by Solarte. Instead of a one two three inning for Dale Thayer it wound up a two run inning for the Dodgers. Miguel Rojas is now going to take over third base and that strengthens defensively the left side even more and we'll pause for this. Takes over at third base. He will bat ninth in the spot occupied by Howell, and Brandon Lee would go into spot occupied by Justin Turner. So when the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the eighth inning, they'll have Arubarena, Ellis, and then Rojas. Brandon Lee 
becomes the fourth Dodger pitcher. Correa went five, then Jamie Wright went an inning and two thirds. Then J.P. Howell got two outs. And now they look to lead. Tommy Medica hitting 255. Seven home runs, 23 runs batted in. Medica is from San Jose. And ball one. Tommy went to Santa Clara. He's 6'1, 190, 26 years old. Signed by the Padres and came up for 19 games last year. He's already bounced around to El Paso this year. And a fly ball to right. Kemp going back and one hands it. So Medica a fly ball and we have two down here in the eighth inning with the Dodgers leading eight four and the batter Reimer Liriano. Liriano rounded the third to short and struck out hitting one eighty two. Big outfielder from the Dominican Republic. Ball one. A lot of people in the San Diego organization looked at uh, Reimer Liriano and they thought of Raul Mondesi of the Dodgers. One and one. An even six, a big 220 pounds. Mondesi, of course, had such great talent, combination of power and speed, and they think Lariano will do the same thing before he's through. Say he's a very good outfielder. Ball two, two and one. This is his first experience in the big leagues and he started the year at San Antonio. Two balls and one strike. And a flare into right for a base hit. So Luriano a two out single. And the batter will be Rene Rivera but he's not coming up. Yasmani Grandal the catcher will be coming up to bat for him. Attention, please, for the Padres. Pinch hitting number eight, Yasmani Grandal. So, Yasmani Grandal coming up. Struggling with the bat, but he has some power. Ten home runs. Grandal's from Havana, Cuba. And a strike. Yasmani lives however now in Miami Springs 6 2 2 10 and originally drafted out of the University of Miami by the Reds. He was a first round pick just didn't work out. One and one. Originally he had been uh, drafted by the Red Sox and Brandon Lee being very careful with him. One ball and one strike. Ball two. Grandall has missed about 30 games. League in his 49th game. Good ERA, 2.3. And there goes the runner, the pitch is strike. They'll refer to that as no stolen base defensive indifference. Two.
two balls, two strikes, two out, and a runner at second. We're in the eighth inning, 8-4 eight Dodgers. Slap foul down the line. We mentioned that Yasmani was from Havana, Cuba. Grandall and his family, including his mom, his stepfather, and maternal grandparents, from what we understand, they won a national lottery that allowed them to enter the U.S. as legal residents. Boy, can you imagine being that lucky? Hmm. Two and two. Ellis making another nice save. Three and two the count. And that's line down the left field line. Base hit. Crawford does well to knock it down. Grandall is on his way to second base anyway with the double. The run is in. And the Dodger lead is 8 to 5. As a line drive double by Grandall cashes in Liriano. Shoots up number five, Alexi Amarista. So now, Alexi Amarista. The shortstop, one for three. Coming up. At five six or five seven, right about. Small strike zone and ball one. They'll go to the bench and have another pinch hit already. And it would be Will Venable who was out there earlier. And did not make an appearance. One ball and no strikes. One and one. Down in the Dodger bullpen. Kenley Jansen begins to loosen up. He's already had a couple of games this year. Where he's had to get four outs. Dodgers hope they don't have to do that tonight. Eight five Dodgers. Eighth inning two out. Randall at second. One and two the count to Amarisi. Grandal shadowed by Aru Barena. Ground ball wide, smothered by Rojas on his feet to throw him out. Otherwise, that's a base hit and another run. So the Dodgers really have a solid defensive left side. Wow. With Aro Morena and Rojas. And it's Rojas making the big play. One run, two hits, one man left. It's 8 5 Dodgers.
favor of the Dodgers as the Padres came back to get one in the eighth inning. Couple of changes. Tommy Medica, who batted for Gobert, and Medica will take over at first base. Meanwhile, the left hander coming out of the bullpen is Frank Yuri Garces, who was acquired as a minor leaguer, originally signed with the Texas Rangers. And Garces coming in for what might be his first game. Yep. First game. So the left hander is about 5'10, 170. From the Dominican Republic, 24 years old. And Frank ready to go to work now. Aru Barena and then Ellis and then Rojas coming up in that order. Aru Barena single to right, walked and struck out. Brandon League, while he was in there, gave up a run, made 17 pitches. But the game still belongs to Kevin Correa, who went five. So Aru Barena checking in. And ball one. Big chopper foul outside of third. One ball and one strike the count. Bottom of the eighth, eight to five Dodgers. When the Padres come up in the ninth inning, the pitcher spot to lead it off, then Solarte and Almonte, and then Seth Smith. Garces. Pitching today was just selected today from San Antonio. Now this is his first big league game. So welcome to the big leagues, Frank Garces. Been in the Padre organization over five years. Boy, that's something, huh? <laughs> And a drive, but hooking down the line foul. Three and two, and Arubarena cracked the bat. So a new stick being brought up. Eris Bell Arubarena. Boy, what a good looking shortstop. Hmm. So another Cuban asset acquired by the Dodgers. Three and two. Oh, big breaking ball. Great pitch by Garces. That's a big pitch, whether it's double A or the big leagues. Aru Morena is badly fooled. Look at the break on that thing. Mm. Any way you look at it, that's, what do they call it, filthy. That's the new expression in the big leagues. Boy, he's got filthy stuff. Well, that was filthy. So he'll always remember that. His first major league hitter, he struck him out. Ellis has lined out to third and a sacrifice fly and grounded to first. So AJ one for two. One ball, one strike. One and one. Looking ahead, you have to believe that. Will Venable will be coming up somewhere in the ninth inning. Venable, by the way, is hitting over 300 against Kenley Jansen. And they have Jace Peterson, another left hand batter. But Solarte and Almonte are both switch hitters, so they could stack up a bunch of left hand batters against Kenley Jansen in the ninth. 
Two balls and two strikes. There's that breaking ball dribbled. Not much of a play. I was just going to say the wise thing for Solarte would be to let it go, and sure enough, it went foul. So he's had two of those, and he was right both times. Looks like a hit, but if it starts going towards the dirt, it's a goner. Two and two. All right, AJ back trying to catch his breath after running hard down the line and in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two balls and two strikes. Fastball at 92. Scouts, managers, general managers, they like pitchers big. 6'2, six, 6'3, six, that's great. But when you see one 5'10 pitching in the big leagues, you know he's had to have good stuff. That one breaking ball that he threw to Aruba Reina to strike him out, that was a dandy. Frank Garces, G A R C E S. That's breaking that same kind of a slider. Although it was up a little on Ellis and he was able to turn on it. Still three and two. Couple of no's. Now they agree. Fastball. AJ late. Tommy Medica bails out. Jerko makes the catch. So two out, bottom of the eighth inning. And the batter will be Miguel Rojas finishing up at third base. What a night for Justin Turner. Two doubles, scored twice, made a couple of nice plays, knocked in one. And Rojas finishing up. So Justin. Sits back hitting well over 300. A couple of more hits tonight. And now the glove men are in charge. Fastball missed ball one. A newcomer to the crowd. A youngster making his big league debut. And all eyes on him from both dugouts. High pop fly. Amarista. And the Dodgers tiptoe through the eighth inning. So we are heading for the ninth. Kenley Jansen is heading for the mound. And the Dodgers lead the Padres eight to five.
Seventh inning, the Dodgers lead the Padres 8-5. A little bit closer than the numbers might indicate. The two errors by San Diego gives you some kind of an indication that it might be even closer. And as we expected with Kenley Jansen coming in, we would see Will Venable batting for the young man Frank Garces, who made his major league debut tonight, retired the side in order, struck out one, and did not allow a ball hit out of the infield. So you can imagine when he walked off the field and all the Padres greeted him and shook his hand. Welcome to the big leagues. And now Kenley Jansen trying to turn out the lights. And Will Venable will start it off. As we said, Venable is hitting 308 against Kenley Jansen. So Medica, Grandal, Nelson, and now Venable. All pinch hitters. One of them, Grandall, had a double. Nelson struck out. Medica flied to right. And here is Venable. Will Venable, as a pinch hitter, is six for 16 with two runs batted in. So he's done well. And in for a strike. 0 and 1 to count. Will Venable, whose dad Max played for many years in the big leagues, so he's a chip off the old block, went to Princeton. And he's even up one ball and one strike. Venable with the Padres last year hit 268. Hitting 227 right now. Two balls and one strike. Venable was signed by the Padres out of Princeton. First time we saw him was way back in 2008. Waiting on deck is Jan Solarte. High slicing fly ball that's heading back into the stands. 45,459 here today. The Dodgers have drawn 2 million eight. So they're getting close. They'll get to 2 million nine tomorrow. So they will get to 3 million certainly during this homestand. Two balls and two strikes they count. Of course, the Dodgers had only 35 games left. 15 on the road. Two and two. Fastball missed. For Kenley Jansen, he is in his 54th game. ERA 2.8. As usual, the walks to strikeouts rather remarkable. 13 walks, 81 strikeouts. So Venable opens up with a walk, and the batter will be Jan Heves Solarte. Third baseman, number 27, Jan Heves Solarte. Jan Hervis Solarte flied to center, hit into a double play, singled to center, and singled up the middle. And a strike, 0 and 1. Abraham Almonte on deck. He's had a big night, three hits. Solardi has two, so they have five hits at the very top of the lineup. One ball and one strike. 
Ken Lee didn't have a chance to work very much in the Milwaukee series. There wasn't anything to save. Kenley's pretty easy to steal on. I don't know if they'll go with Venable that way or not. That's a strike. One and two. Last time we checked, the league success was like 26 out of 29. One and two to Solarte. Hitting 289. Fouled away. So the Dodgers started with Correa. He got through five innings. It wasn't easy. He did have a stretch where he retired two, five, seven in a row. Then they had to come and get him after he gave up three hits. Correa gave up four. Jamie Wright, J.P. Howell, Brandon Lee. Lee gave up one. And now Jansen. Trying to put this thing to bed. One ball and two strikes. Padres a much more successful team at home and the Dodgers far more successful on the road. Two and two. Nobody out. Will Venable at first. Gonzalez is not really holding him on. Gonzalez takes the lead almost alongside the runner. Two and two. And popped in the air. It's playable. Gonzalez and Ellis. It's Gonzalez. Adrian makes the catch. So Solarte fouls out. One down. And the batter will be Almonte. Dodgers have had trouble with Almonte tonight. He doubled in the first inning, singled in the third, singled in the fifth, and they finally got him to hit into a force play in the seventh inning. So Almonte hitting 343. Almonte originally signed with the Yankees. Never made it. Got to the big leagues with the Mariners. And there goes Venable. Only in this kind of a game that'll be defensive indifference. No stolen base. But he's still at second. There's no chance of the double play. One out in the ninth. Eight five Dodgers trying to make it eight of eleven. Trying to snap a three game losing streak. And a drag bunt Jensen down to get it and throws it away. So the run will score and Almonte is down to second base. And it is eight to six Dodgers. And Seth Smith will be coming up. So we'll wait for the scoring. It looked like Jansen had the ball in enough time. But we'll see. There's the bun. Kenley picks it up. Looks like there's enough, and he didn't come close to Adrian Gonzalez. So again, he picks, and then the throw is behind the runner. No way Gonzalez could get a glove on it. So all of a sudden it's eight to six and Seth Smith who leads with 12 home runs could get the game even. It's going to be one and one on the bunt base hit error one. And a strike. So Armani bunts for a base hit. Regis second on the throwing error boy. He's a Harry camper out there at second base. Armani has four hits. So Venable scored. High fly ball but playable. Crawford is there. 
Well that's the second out here in the ninth inning. So the Dodgers one out away standing in the way is Jed Jerko who hit the three run home run in the first inning. So we'll check. Jerko is 0 for 5 against Jansen and he has struck out three of the five times if you weren't with us here's a look at his home run right into the hitters background in dead center that makes Korea throw his gum away however the Dodgers battle back they leave 8 6 we're in the ninth with two out and here's Jerko who after his three run home run struck out twice and grounded out. Almonte at second with two outs. So Jerko's potential tying run, 0 and 1. Eight runs, nine hits, and one error by Jansen for the Dodgers. Six runs, 13 hits, and two errors for the Padres. Tommy Medica is on deck to follow Jerko. And that's going to go to center base hit. Puig charges, and Hopman wants to hold up Almonte. It's cut off by Goldman. Throw to third and got him. Cut off by Gonzalez. And Almonte is burned trying to get back. Bud Black is going to argue. So we're going to get on the phone, Dave Roberts. And we'll wait and see whether this is over or not over. Very close play at third. Bill Miller, the umpire, made the call. It was a great heads up pick by Gonzalez. Bill Roberts checks. Doesn't have a, a solution. Now, sometimes the umpires will call their own review, and I think that's what they're doing. So, this is a review, but I don't think it belongs to Bud Black. Here's the throw. Great heads up cut off by Gonzalez and the throw to third. Tough call for Miller because he's on the line. See where the umpire is. He's trying to get up and have a look. It's pretty hard because Rojas back is to him. Tough tough play. He really can't see it can he. Well he says out and he said it positively. But it's still a very very tough play. So they are cutting this thing very close. Abraham Almonte rounding third on the base hit. Bud Black. I'm not sure Bud asked for the official review because Dave Roberts gave him one of those can't tell. I really don't know how they can tell. Plate umpire couldn't have seen it. And really, Bill Miller was in a tough spot. Trying to see with Rojas back to him. Every time they do this, I realize it's a salute to the umpires. And here's the play. Look where Miller is. Can he see the tag? I mean, Rojas is back as it covered, yet Bill is sure. I don't know. That that's really hard. He was certainly positive though, wasn't he? Which is what they teach you in umpiring school. When you call, make it firm, hard, loud, and immediate. And Bill did that. But it was very tough. So Black and Roberts talking it over. Now let's see. Are they going to call a game? Yep. They're calling him out. And the Dodgers win the game. Boy, you want to talk about cutting a close one. You cut down the runner at third on a base hit, and that's the end of the game. Eight runs, nine hits, an error for the Dodgers. Six runs, 14 hits, two errors for the Padres. The player of the game, certainly Carl Crawford. He had a walk. Two singles, a stolen base, a two run home run. He wound up scoring three times as well. So Carl Crawford has a big night. The Dodgers hang on and beat a pesky San Diego team, eight to six. 
in game one of what should be an exciting series. They play each other very tough. In some ways, their baseball's answer to push against show. We'll see you tomorrow night. Till then, we wish you all a very pleasant good evening, everybody. Yeah!